Moon Knight is set to make his MCU debut in his very own Disney Plus series. And while the character enjoys some popularity, he is still more of an obscure character in the Marvel Universe. Most people say he is Marvel's Batman. Both are wealthy, normal humans who fight crime with detective skills, cover identities, skilled confidants, and are equipped with high-tech gadgetry and personalized throwing weapons. Where they differ drastically is motivation. The Batman is motivated by the death of his parents, whereas Moon Knight is motivated by his checkered past, dealing out justice to whoever has it coming in the name of an Egyptian god. We will expand upon this more because a lot of Moon Knight's most iconic aspects were not introduced until long after the character's first appearance, including things such as his disassociative identity disorder. So let's dive in as we explore the history of Moon Knight. Am I like some sort of secret agent? It's a little more complicated than that. The character of Moon Knight was created by Doug Mensch and Don Perlin, first appearing in Werewolf by Night number 32. Here he was hired as a mercenary by the committee to capture the titular werewolf. When Moon Knight realized Jack Russell was the victim and not a monster, he teamed up with the werewolf. Moon Knight would make a couple of other appearances in the series as well as other cameos and shorts before getting his own series that fleshed out his origin. Mark Spector was born in Chicago, Illinois, the son of Elias Spector, a rabbi who survived Nazi persecution. Mark and his brother Randall grew up on the poor side of the city where their father Elias was the target of discrimination. Mark couldn't understand why his father never fought back. During the last years of his childhood, Mark discovered by chance that a close friend of the family, Rabbi Yitz Perlman, was a Nazi deserter and secretly a serial killer of Jews named Ernst. Mark's fighting instinct kicked off for the first time when he fended off against Perlman to escape his grasp. This very traumatic event would cause Mark to develop disassociative identity disorder leading to the creation of his first personalities, Jake Lockley and Stephen Grant. After Elias' death, Mark chooses to renounce his family's history, beliefs, and pacifism, and cuts his own path through life. He joins the Marines, where he becomes a formidable combatant and trained heavyweight boxer. He serves for three years until his instability begins to act up, and he runs away before it is discovered that he lied on his paperwork about his mental illness, and he is dishonorably discharged. He then offers his services to the CIA until he eventually becomes sick of the organization's practices and he leaves. Spectre would purge any morals that remained and became a mercenary. During the dark days as a hired gun, Mark would meet John Paul Duchamp, who he nicknames Frenchie, a bright spot in the darkness and someone who would become Mark's best friend and most trusted ally. Unfortunately, also during this time, Spectre meets a man named Raoul Bushman in Egypt who he accompanies on a good old-fashioned tomb raid on an archaeological site. It is here where Mark and Frenchie see how truly evil and sinister Bushman is, as he ends up murdering the lead archaeologist, Peter al -Ruan. Mark intervenes when Bushman attempts to kill the archaeologist's daughter, Marlene, and is severely beaten and mortally wounded. Bushman leaves, killing everyone except Marlene, Frenchie, and a single villager who told him the secrets of the tomb. Spectre was somehow able to make it inside the tomb before he collapsed beneath the statue of Khonshu, moon god and protector of travelers at night. There his heart stops, but mere seconds later he is revived and fully healed, claiming to have seen Khonshu. He says he was chosen by the moon god to act as his knight of vengeance, the fist of Khonshu. He dons a silver hooded cloak that was draped on the statue and goes after Bushman. With the aid of Frenchie, Spectre smashed Bushman's operation, and while Bushman himself got away, Mark was able to gain a new outlook on life. Armed with renewed purpose, Mark Spector returns to the United States with Frenchie and Marlene and moves to New York. He crafts a costume, designs equipment, and develops the persona of Moon Knight to deliver justice as the Fist of Khonshu. He takes the large amount of money he made from mercenary work and turns it into a small fortune, buying a mansion he uses as a base of operations, as well as funding his equipment like the Mooncopter. Mark also adopts his other two personas to aid in his mission. Stephen Grant is a successful millionaire, actor, and entrepreneur who is able to attend lavish parties and events to gain intel on high-level criminals, while Jake Lockley is a cab driver who is able to gain intels on crimes from the street level by civilians. Leading four separate lives as Mark Spector, Jake Lockley, Stephen Grant, and Moon Knight puts a lot of stress on Mark's mental health over time, and we will see the struggles that this causes for him later on. We now circle back to Moon Knight's first appearance because this is the first time the hero operates as the Moon Knight. 
After helping Jack Russell in thwarting the committee, Mark Spector fully begins his career of crime fighting on the streets of New York as Moon Knight. He is aided by Frenchie, who helps him in the field and pilots the Moon Copter, Marlene, who became an on and off love interest for Mark, as well as informants he acquires in his Jake Lockley persona, such as the homeless Bertrand Crawley, diner owner Gina Landers, and her two sons Ricky and Ray. During his early career, Moon Knight aided various heroes such as Spider-Man, The Thing, and The Defenders. He also squared off against his brother Randall and believed he'd killed them in their skirmish. More missions brought more adversaries for Spectre, including Midnight Man, Darren Cross, and rematches with Jack Russell and Bushman. Spectre's sanity continued to deteriorate, and when he debated abandoning all of his alternate identities to preserve his mental balance, he met three priests of Khonshu who convinced Spectre of his status as an avatar of the deity. They also gave him upgraded weapons and abilities, but we later found out that this was Khonshu influencing him subconsciously. It is after this that Mark goes to help the West Coast Avengers, eventually joining the team for a time. Here he begins a romance with fellow member Tigra, but it does not last too long as Moon Knight leaves the team over a disagreement with the Avengers' no-kill policy. Spectre returns to New York and after reuniting with Marlene and Frenchie, sets up a new home in a mansion in Long Island. Mark expands his business into Spectre Enterprises and resumes his activities as Moon Knight. During this time, he takes on a teenage sidekick, Midnight, who helps him for a while. Moon Knight teams up with heroes like Spider-Man and the Punisher during this time and creates a business called Spectre Corp, adopting new adamantium armor, weapons, and a harder edge to his crime fighting. The Avengers eventually place Moon Knight on trial for supposedly abusing membership privileges, leading Spectre to cut all ties with the team, leaving him to focus on street-level crime again. Eventually, Mark has a confrontation with a technological villain called Seth, the Immortal, and his Zero Hour program. During the desperate battle, Moon Knight is able to save his friends and defeat Seth, but he sacrifices himself in the process. Denied the comfort of the grave, Mark Spector returned to life again through the power of Khonshu to continue as the champion of the moon and the fist of Khonshu. For reasons unexplained, Moon Knight abandons his belief that his role includes understanding his enemies and offering redemption, and now acts with greater violence and brutality. Later, the committee hires Bushman to take out Moon Knight, and while Mark is able to defeat his enemy, Bushman is able to cause horrible bodily injury, destroying Mark's legs, leaving him crippled. Moon Knight musters up his remaining strength and takes things a bit too far when he kills Bushman and uses the sharp end of his crescent dart to carve off his face. This leaves Mark Specter crippled and despondent as he turns to pills and alcohol because he's unable to continue being Moon Knight. In the process, he pushes away everyone close to him, including Frenchie and Marlene, keeping himself isolated as he wallows in misery, drinking away his fortune. Spectre would regain the use of his legs in a very comic booky way. I mean, this guy was brought back from the dead twice or three times already, after Frenchie was severely beaten right after coming out of the closet to Mark. Mark tracked down his assailant and then returned to his role as Moon Knight. Moon Knight would take part in the Civil War event, reluctantly taking the side of Tony Stark and registering under the Superhuman Registration Act to ensure that no one would interfere with his work. After the secret invasion, when Norman Osborn starts to accrue power, he sends his team of Thunderbolts after Moon Knight, which causes Moon Knight to fake his own death. After that, he fled to Mexico using his Jake Lockley name. However, Moon Knight watches as Norman Osborn continues to take control of the country, and he vows to get his revenge for everything that was done to him. Moon Knight returns to New York and begins fighting crime again, this time as a less violent hero for the people. He also uses only his Jake Lockley persona during this time. After Norman Osborn is defeated during the Siege of New Asgard, Captain America would recruit Moon Knight to be a part of his team of secret Avengers. Some of his teammates, including the X-Man Beast, did not trust him due to his mental illness. He would appear in the series until Hawkeye became the new leader of the group, at which time he left. Mark Spector returns and moves to Los Angeles to work as a television producer, creating the show The Legend of Khonshu, which he based on his own past as Moon Knight. He would continue to fight crime, developing multiple personalities again, this time taking the forms of Captain America, Wolverine, and Spider-Man. It is during this time that Spectre would run into Maya Lopez, aka Echo, and the two would date for a period. Eventually, Legend of Khonshu was cancelled and Moon Knight left LA. Mark Spectre would once again return to New York to continue his crime-fighting career. He developed a new Mr. Knight persona, with which he started working along with the NYPD on numerous different cases that are more normal, while 
With his Moon Knight persona, he continued his normal vigilante activities while also handling more supernatural threats. Mr. Knight is a intellectual, suave, and charming detective that allows the hero to work with the cops while not being arrested for all the things that he has done while he was Moon Knight. During the all-new Marvel era, Mark Spector would awaken inside of an insane asylum filled with people that looked like his associates, allies, and friends. Spectre began to question his own sanity and wondered if his whole career as Moon Knight was part of his psychosis. This was later revealed to be a test run by Khonshu to help Mark heal his broken mind. Mark realized this and healed himself by facing all of his personas and finally embracing them. Moon Knight would return to New York in a more standard version of the character who continues to serve as the Fist of Khonshu in Marvel Comics to this day. What version of Moon Knight will we see in the series, and what personas will he bring with him? The possibilities are endless, and I cannot wait to see what lies ahead for this character. If you liked the video, don't forget to give us a thumbs up, and comment down below what spotlight you'd like to see next. If you are new to the channel and want more content, please subscribe and hit the notification bell to be up to date on all of our latest videos. Until next time, guys. Catch you later.